Well, good afternoon, it's Tuesday and welcome back to the shop. So before we put the roof on, as I mentioned in the previous video, we had to complete putting the windshield surround in. So now all of the clips are in that hold the, uh, the convertible top are in. I put the sun visors in, I have the um, rear view mirror, which of course, as you know, is also a dash cam. It's also a backup camera. I put the trim on the A pillars is in. And also we put the trim around the windshield. So that is done as well. So really, we need to put the roof on. Now, how do you put the roof on when you're by yourself? Well, real easy. Same way I took it off. I'm going to use my engine stand, lift the roof up. The roof is then going to hover over the car. We're going to lower it. And what we need to do is we need to put the clips. The main clip goes in here. And then once we have the main clip on both sides, what we can do is we can then attach some of the pivot rods and then, of course, the hydraulics. So I guess the only thing left for me to do is to lift that roof. Well, they always say it's never too late to try new things. So I went and bought a Wi-Fi mic and it just plugs into the cell phone and it uses the mic now to record. The furnace was coming on every 15 minutes and it was starting to drown me out. I noticed in my last video, the audio level was just up and down. And that's because the phone is trying to accommodate both the noise from the heater because it's minus 25. The heater was coming on every 10, 15 minutes. So at least hopefully this is working because I'm not going to really know until I edit this video later on. But getting the roof on, easiest way to do it, as I mentioned, is to use the engine hoist. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift the, in, the uh, hood or the roof all the way up until it clears the car. Okay, so the two main clips are in, right? So you lower in the roof, you put the one clip on that side because it's easier to put it in. You tilt the roof, put that clip in, and then you can come here because you have your control. You can drop this side in, get the clip in. Now, I want to hook the hydraulics up, and for that, of course, I need the, 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 the tabs, which, of course, then go through the hydraulic and onto the, the roof. Now, the way these work is I put the hydraulic system about halfway up, which means it's about halfway between up and down. So I'm going to have to take this roof, lower it, and fold it backwards because I need to bring it back for the hydraulic cylinder to line up with the pin. And then once the hydraulic cylinder is lined up with the pin, I can put the clip in. So we're going to do that next. As always, harder than it looks. I've got, uh, I've got to be able to get the clip in, the two bushings, get it greased up, put the pin on, and the washer. And of course, that always becomes a pain in the butt. But that side is in. Let's do the other side. The challenge is always when your hands are full of grease and you're trying to get a clip on. I was able to get the clip on. So what we have now connected are the two main pivots. Now they're not locked in yet, but the two main pivots are in, plus also the hydraulic cylinders. Now there's a third arm, but the only way I'm gonna align that third arm is I'm gonna need to release the um, engine hoist and allow me then to start to move the roof a little bit. And that'll allow me then to get the third connectors on. And once the third connectors are on, then we can start to use the hydraulics to get this roof about 60% closed because what we need to do is change all of the seals out on it and I wanted to change those seals while it was still on, while it was on the car so we need to be able to do that
Now you notice that the car is up in the back, and that's because I wasn't able to get the engine hoist under the car because of the frame connectors. I'd forgotten about the frame connectors. So as soon as I tried to put the engine hoist under the car, I was hitting the frame connector. I had to put a jack underneath the rear end of the car just to lift the car enough so that the engine hoist would go under it. But we're in good shape now. Let's get that third arm in, and then we can complete this roof. We just got to put a couple of clips on those third members and the roof is the way it is. What we'll do is we'll fire up the hydraulics and let's see this thing move. Okay, we're back in the car. Roof is where we had left it. Let's push this top up. A few squeaky noises, more than likely just everything opening for the first time. And there we go. So we got the roof up to where we want it. I guess now what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna bother worrying about the front here yet because we really need to tie the back in because it's once the back is locked in, then we're gonna be able to understand where the front goes. Now, the good news is that there's gonna be some of the uh, witness marks on the back of the original roof where they tied into the car. Then I'll just use where the roof goes to then realign the new window because uh, you know I'll just make it taunt just like the rest of it. So I guess the next step now is let's see if we can tie the back of this roof into the car. Okay, so this is new to me, like I said. It's all about sequence. And I'm looking at this going, well, you know, I've got the roof up at the front. I just put a couple of towels on the front so the roof is held up. So it is relaxed this way. Of course, the metal which is part of the original seal, has the original uh, clips in it, and of course I just simply bolt this onto the car. So this literally just bolts in and I can see the bolt holes and it's relaxed enough that I can put it in. But I realize now that I guess when I took it apart, I took the chrome off or the stainless off before I took the roof off. And I had to get, I remember trying to get my hands in here and trying to get it out. So I realized the chrome simply can go in now, it's nice and easy, put the chrome in, and then this piece can come in and simply bolt in, so there's no real reason to sit and fight with the roof. So, a little bit of a pause while I go and finish cleaning all of the stainless for the back of the vehicle. Let's get the stainless trim in, let it get it all screwed down, and then we can turn our attention to again bolting this back in and getting the new window in the back and all of that. But let's, uh, let's go take care of that first. Well, it looks like before we can polish anything, we need to restore. What I found is that I wanted to remove these plastic uh, grommets. I guess they're just protectors. Um, they stop when these are tied down to the car. They stop the, these from uh, marking the paint. But I noticed when I took these, I wanted to clean that off. So I thought, okay, I'll remove them. Well, when I removed them, I found underneath that all of these clips, being steel, are absolutely rusting. So they're in good shape, but again, why not stop this in its tracks? So I've hit all of these with rust inverter. That will then change the rust, um, make it benign, and then we'll seal them with some paint, and then we'll polish these pieces. Now I'm gonna go get the other one, do exactly the same thing, and let these set for a while so that the rust inverter can do its job. Then once we do that, we'll also then clean these up, and then once all of that is done, then it should be time to polish. So. I'm gonna go now get the other one and do exactly the same thing. Well, good afternoon, it's Thursday and welcome back to the shop. So I spent about four hours yesterday just on this trim around the back of the window. Now, yeah, I took a lot of time, I cleaned the clips out, I prepared them with um, rust converter because they were starting to rust. And of course I had to polish all this up and yeah, that took me a couple of hours, but what took me two additional hours is that this piece didn't fit back on the car. And let me show you why. 
basically the trouble is in this radius the driver's rear quarter as we know has fitment issues it has fitment issues at the door you have to take about a quarter inch off in order to get that door skin to fit properly in the b pillar you have to take a bunch off back here in order for the extension to fit properly on the car well i've learned now that you have to take this radius off as well in order for this piece to move far enough back so it fits up here. So if you've got a convertible and you have this trim piece, do this while the car is not yet painted because here I am having to take abrasives on the inside of this radius so that my chrome piece or this stainless steel piece can move back on a freshly painted car Plus, I had to drill holes here because, again, this panel, the holes were wrong. So, again, the driver's side panel is terrible for all of these defects. Do this before you paint your car. In my case, I had to do it after the paint, and that is scary because a slip of the drill, a drill bit snaps, or anything goes wrong, I, re I destroy my paint job. So, basically, this piece is on. It's about 80%. I don't like it as much as it could be, but I can't do anything more without having to do some destructive, you know, redoing back here. And I should have done that before it was painted. Now, passenger side, snapped right in. Not even an issue. I spent an hour just on this one piece fitting it. So, like I said, word of recommendation, put this trim piece on before you paint your car, but we're there now anyways. So what's left? Well, obviously, the way this window works, and we have all of the witness marks here, is this simply goes up inside here. And gets bolted in, right? There's about four bolts that hold it in. But before I put this piece in, we have to replace the back window. Remember, the back window is being replaced with a folding piece of glass. So we have to put it in, we have to bring that piece down, and then we have to transfer the metal bracket from the old back window to the new back window. I'm gonna to try to keep the measurements the same and then we can put all of this together and then we can bolt it in. I'm also thinking that I'm gonna use the same sealant I used around the windshield. I'm gonna lay a bead along in here to try to stop water from coming down here and getting in the car. Because even though these cars were built with an internal channel to wick the water away, it took that water and spilled it right into the front of the quarter panel, which again, uh, this is, they weren't designed to last more than five or six years. They were disposable. I want to stop that water from getting in the car, and the only way I'm going to do that is seal it. So next step is let's get working on that back window. Well, I'm afraid no amount of restoration is going to bring this window back to life. So we have to replace it. So what did I do? I have the replacement folding glass window. So it's the same style of window, except as I mentioned before, it is a folding glass. Now, I've got a challenge that I've got to look at. Number one, the new glass uses a plastic zipper. The old glass has a steel zipper. So I'm going to have to check to see if I need to actually replace the zipper component on the roof, and that will be a challenge. The next thing is this metal tacking strip. So this, of course, is the strip that bolts to the body of the car. It then obviously pins the roof to it. And then when you bolt it all together, it makes a seal. Now, in this case, what I can do is I normally would take this window and I would just lay it out on top, take some measurements, you know, and of course, these have channels in them. So you've got some play. So a little variation wouldn't hurt. But in my case, because we may have to actually change the zipper up here, then that's going to throw the whole thing off and I'm going to have to redo that. So I'm going to remove the metal strip. And once the metal strip is off, I'm going to take this window, install it in the car, and it'll determine whether or not I need to replace the other side of the zipper. And then once it's in place, I will then have this where it's going to be on the back window. I will then take the metal strip. I will put it on the car. Then we can take this, wrap it around it, mark it, and then we can trim it. But I think that's the most prudent approach because if I just cut it now and put it in, I could have a problem at the top. So next step, let's remove this tacking strip and we'll go on from there. So of course I pulled the tacking strip off of the old window and guess what I found? 
more staples. So the previous person who put this window in obviously didn't bother taking the old staples out, so I did. Now, we have a problem. The old window uses a steel zipper. The new window uses a plastic zipper. Now the problem is, is they're not compatible. They don't zip onto each other, which means this piece here, which came with the new window, needs to be mounted in the back of the window like that. How am I going to do it? I have to remove this cover piece and then you roll it back and you can see as I roll it back it's exposing staples. I take this piece off, remove all of these staples, pull this piece out and then there's going to be staples from the roof into that uh, tacking strip. I'm going to have to pull all of those staples and then once I pull all of those staples, I hopefully will be able to then take the old zipper, which will look just like this, out of that area. Then I can take the new one, put it in, take these two pieces, because I'm going to assume they're separate pieces because of the way this folds down. You just can't bend things like this. So I'm going to then take the two pieces, put them back the way they are, and then restaple everything. Now. The good news is there'll be a ton of witness marks. I'll be able to put these two sections back in, no problem. This piece here, I'll simply give it the same length uh, in the back as the original piece, because when you look at the two windows, at least the distance between the zipper and the glass is the same, so the window should hang about the same place. So I gotta take all this out. So another two, three, maybe even four hours added to replace this window, but I guess I'll stop talking about it. I'll just start pulling this apart. So we have to recognize small miracles when we get them. So basically, first off, when removing this top strip, do not just grab it and try to rip it out because you're going to tear through it, right? These things are fragile. I'm using a flathead screwdriver to get under each of the staples and lift them while they're in here. And then I finish up. I only lift them. I don't try to pull them. Because when you try to pull them, they're going to turn sideways on you and snap. Once I've lifted them, I come back with the side cutters and I take each staple out. Now, what do I mean by small miracles? This is a single piece. So this piece and this piece is one piece. So I don't have to worry about it. So I can just use the same reference marks and put this together. But now you can see there's a bunch of staples between this surface and that tacking strip. So we're going to have to pull all of those staples as well. And finally, that should release that um, zipper band that I can then pull that out and then put the new one in place and then come back and tack this whole thing and then tack this back on. And then with the window in, finally, I can zip it in, drop it down, make sure it aligns on both sides. And then we can finally start looking at putting this back together and putting in that nailing strip so we can get the rear window aligned. But I'm going to continue the process on the other side. I'll see you in a few seconds. Well, this is as far as I go today. I literally took all the staples out of the roof. And now it turns out that if we fold this back, and we have to be careful we don't scratch the car. There we go. You can see that the inner piece is also stapled on. Those staples go way down to here. Now the piece that I want to replace is also stapled, so it's stapled first. So I don't have many options. I have to now remove these staples down this side piece, peel this back to the point where this goes, so this ends about here, right? We can see that right there, that that ends here. So I'm going to need to peel these staples back to get this piece out of the way. Then I can get to these staples, and then I can remove this piece, and then I can put the new piece back and staple it, put these back, bring these back. Now what I did do is I created, I used chalk, and I just simply created a couple of lines. I simply took my chalk and ran it across, and that gave me two lines. So when I put this back together, I'll be able to pull this down so that that lines up with the piece just like that, right? So you have to make sure that this goes back where it belongs, or this won't stretch or that won't stretch. So that's enough for today. I'm going to deal with this tomorrow. Part two coming up. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. And I'll see you tomorrow.